Yes. Oh, hello, Lorraine here at uh, gathering our uh, wellness gathering. Uh, today we're going to be doing a series of uh, a course on happiness, and it's going to be led by my daughter, Lynn Hilderman, who is very qualified in this area. She brings <laughs> happiness into the world. There Lynn, you go. Take it away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, yes, so we're going to, yes, over the next six weeks, we will be focusing on, on happiness and, and what it means and what we would want it for. And so we always start with saying our name, saying where we are, and answering a question anyone, anywhere, anytime can answer. And so the question I'm going to start with tonight is, what grabs your attention easily? So my name is Lynn and I am in Calgary, Alberta. And what grabs my attention easily is my environment. I, um, I feel like I'm always attuned to my environment, be it inside or outside. Uh, but that, that grabs my attention instantaneously is I'm, it's like I've got little feelers out. <laughs> It's like, what's going on in the environment today? <laughs> so we've had lots of sun, which is nice for the weather, but um, that's that's what grabs my, intent, my attention easily is the environment. Madeline, you want to go next? Hi, Madeline. I'm in Calgary also. And what grabs my attention e easily? Well, usually it's my little dog, Suki, because... She just is attached to the hip to me. When others are around, she tends to be a little less all me, and uh, and that's okay. But typically, when she wants something, she's she's determined to get my attention, and it's kind of hard to ignore her. So <laughs> I'm going with that today. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, Don Marie. Hello, I'm Dawn Marie, and I'm in California, and what grabs my attention, Lynn, is pretty much what you said, the environment. When I wake up in the morning and I open up my blinds and I can look out and see what the weather is going to be, sunshine really invigorates me, and I just feel like I have to get out there in it, but if it's overcast or rainy, you know, then I know that I need to just sit still and stay inside and just, you know, be a little bit more reflective. But getting out in that sun, it ignites me like no other. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Welcome. Lorraine. Okay, my name is Lorraine. I'm in uh, Sawyer's British Columbia. And what grabs my attention easily? Well, I could say the environment. Um, uh, but I think it's just the process of getting mobile in the morning, <laughs> one foot at a time, <laughs> and just because I'm, I'm having kind of limited uh, act, uh, mobility, and so that grabs my attention, and I have to be very mindful of how I'm moving, and uh, take my time, and uh, smile at myself in the mirror. <laughs> awesome. Well, welcome. Well, the with doing these questions, it's really important to go with the first thing that comes up. And so in core alignment and emotional wisdom training, which is a program that's been developed by Kate Michaels, uh, that we, it's all based on questions. And the best way to answer a question is to say the question out loud and then go with the first thing that comes up. So that's part of the practice that we'll be doing through this through our time with focusing on happiness. And the first com you know, conversation that we're gonna be looking at is what would we want to focus on happiness for? And we're gonna be working through what they call in core alignment and emotional wisdom training, the five steps to success, which is knowing what you want, asking for it, showing up, keeping your word and having a natural attitude of gratitude along the way. So the first step is always knowing what we want, what we want it for and what we want it more for. And this really helps us to develop our, our why. I mean, they often talk about our why. 
but we we always go with what for because the what for elicits gathering more information as opposed to the why which elicits going down sort of a rabbit hole of spinning <laughs> so so what 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 would you want to focus on happiness for and i'm going to let everyone go we're all going to take turns but i'd like everyone just to go when they're inclined to go so what would you want to have happiness for or focus on it for this next six weeks well, I, could, I can say that right off the bat here. <laughs> what I want to happiness for is um, just to maintain and continue to be in a state of mind that, um, um, that is going to be, make the day easier for me. So I can, you know, go throughout the day and uh, feel good about what I'm thinking because so many things can creep into your psyche and your mind without you really knowing it and not getting hung up on it. So I, it's a, a very, it's a, an hourly minute thing that you really want that happiness and, and be grateful for every little thing that you can, that comes your way. And uh, um, it's, uh, it, I think that's where I want happiness for. So that, so to have that moment to moment as you go about your day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess I'll go next. Um, what I would like to focus on happiness for is like an affirmation for me to be able to, when I get up in the morning, just remember to smile and remember to be grateful and remember that, um, you know, for even waking up, having that opportunity to see another day. Um, one of the things that I do when I first open up my eyes is I'm like, thank you, Lord, for letting me see another day. And that to me just jump starts my day. I know that my mind starts wondering and it starts wondering on the things that happened yesterday or last week, which I don't know why I allow that to happen to me because it's over and that's really nothing I can do about it. So learning to be happy in the moment and being present and being grateful just for the little things that I am given every day when I wake up. So that's really what I'm going to focus on with happiness over these next six weeks is just having an attitude of gratitude about I'm here. I get to experience this. I get to see another opportunity of some growth in my life. So thank you for giving me this platform to really think about that. <laughs> yes, well, and it is that remembering, right? Remembering mm -hmm. that's a choice. And we often don't know that it's a choice. Yes. You know, yes. we forget that, oh yeah, I could choose something else here. <laughs> Easily, yes. <laughs> well, Lynn, you took the words right out of my mouth. That's what I want it for, to always remember that it is a choice and mm. that the satisfaction aspect of the little things, I mean, turning on a tap and getting hot water, oh my God, like there are, you know, so many things that we just take for granted because that is the way life is now. And I've spent a great number of hours just in the last little while reading historical fiction that is all about like what was going on in the 1700s. And, you know, I don't think any of us would survive the stuff that they had to, maybe it, because we would know how to do it better. But in any case, it has made me extremely satisfied with the things that are currently easy for us. Mm -hmm. And, and that, alone allows that happiness uh, to be because of that gratitude, like everyone has said, right? So I want it to always be present uh, and, and realize that I am making a choice, definitely. Got it, awesome. Yes, I, I, you know, happiness, what I want it for, is to have that ability, you know, when you're speaking of that, 
to be able to look at situations that may be less than happy, but still find the nugget of grace in it, because there is both at all times, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and what, what if a situation, you know, thinking back to 1700s, like, you know, what, what difference would happiness have made with awareness and acceptance of knowing that, you know, even though things, it's easy to look at it and go, oh my gosh, that could have been, would have been really intense. But uh, so what I would like happiness for, I want to just have a focus. I think where my, you know, where our attention goes, the energy flows. Mm -hmm. And I typically feel like I'm fairly happy, but man, I can wallow in a, a pit of despair fairly consistently. And so I'd like to have happiness with that too, <laughs> if that's possible. So, so we're going to just look at happiness. So what, what is it that you think happiness means? Well, what does it mean to you? What does happiness mean to you? I'll go. Uh, happiness, there is uh, an extreme amount of contentment in happiness. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be wildly energetic. It can be quite calm and peaceful. But acknowledging that it is energy and that the kind of energy that I associate with happiness is, is a much higher kind of revolution in terms of speed and excitement and, ha and joy. And so to be able to find that happiness on a more even plane was something that I really had to search for. And, and that was, you know, because sometimes, like you say, you know, you can be actually in a pit, but to be okay with that, there is a certain amount of happiness with that as well. So it's allowing, I think an awful lot of it is just allowing us to be the humans we are. Got it. So what does, yeah, so what does happiness mean? Uh, happiness means, <laughs> um, I, well, it's, it's a, that's a, you have to kind of close your ha eyes. And I think I agree with you, Madeline, that how, it's a calming uh, uh, feeling um, and an and inspirational feeling. And uh, it's, uh, and I think it's a, an attraction too to the other things that are other people that are happy or other situations that are happy. So those kind of things do enter your mind or your awareness, or if you're looking at something and you can find the, the happiness. And I, I really think that happiness also it's not really talked about that much and because you know why did you want to be happy you know you sit there and look a, a glum look on your face and uh, so it's it's just talking about it and it just brings a little bit of attraction to things that look happy Got it. Got it. yeah it does it does mean attraction and it what about yourself don marie what do you think what do you think happiness means so happiness to me means you know so often I I'm alone and so this is my way of communicating with the outside world is through having this platform of zoom and um, over the weekend I it was Easter and it's like you know I'm here all alone I'm okay with that but it's like, it's a, it's a totally different season for me right now being in this environment of um, COVID and you know this pandemic of having to be secluded and not really being able to get out and be amongst the people out, outside of me. And so over the weekend, I went and had some acupuncture done and I just felt like, you know what? I'm just gonna do something different. I'm just gonna do something to make me feel good. I'm just going to do something to help me relax and just be centered. So for me, happiness means, again, being able to make the choices that you want to make yourself be at peace. 
whatever that may be and to be okay with it. You know, even though you, um, you know, for me, I'm alone, but I'm okay. And I think that having this time to do a lot of self-reflecting and being able to make those choices of what I want to eat and how I want to do it and all of those things brings me so much peace and, and happiness is, you know, getting to be able to express it with others. And this platform allows me to be able to do that. Mm. Got it, got it. Yes, I, I, you know, I've been working with happiness. Actually, when I came to work with this program, it's a program that I developed with Kate Michaels. I had been coaching with her for many, many years. And, uh, you know, I said to her one day, you know, I don't understand how people can just be happy. Like I was having a moment where I was like, I don't get that. Like, you know, <laughs> and uh, anyways, that's how it all started is we started having these weekly conversations on happiness and, and really what it means. And, and it really came down to this sense of calm confidence, really. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so part of it is, yeah, looking at what it means but what, what do you think happiness means to other people? I think, I mean, just in my environment, I'm, I'm like you, Don Marie, I'm, you know, pretty isolated. But I think when I look out in, I think happiness is being with, they want to be with people, they want to be drinking, they want to be <laughs> playing games, uh, they want to laugh, they want to share jokes. Um, it's, you know, and that that brings them their comfort. Uh, and I think it's the need to be with people. Um, and I, I can see that, uh, you know, there's <laughs> now that they, there's those who have and those who don't and, and I don't know if people are happy just to be by themselves because of the need of that socialization of, I don't know what, you know, eating together and playing cards and things. I mean, that makes you happy. And, but it's, if you re totally rely on an activity to make you happy, are, is, are you really happy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, that's a good point. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so what, yeah, what does happiness, what does happiness mean to others? Or what do you think it means to others? Well, I think there is, because we are in such a consumer society, I think having the newest car or having the newest watch or having the upgraded computer, whatever happens to be the greatest, latest, I think people think that that's going to make them happy. And I, I think that's, you know, I personally, I don't go there often. <laughs> I don't have a new car every year to, just because a new one came out. Um, I don't look at material stuff as the stuff that makes me happy. Um, but I think there is you know, a reasonable amount of people look at, I mean, just with consumerism the way it is, there must mm. be for people to be pumping out the number of cars that are sitting on car lots. I mean, it just wouldn't make sense if people weren't buying them. It wouldn't happen. <laughs> it wouldn't be happening. Mm -hmm. So I think there is some reality in that. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I have a, a really good friend. She's um, married and I, I watch her and when we do get a chance to interact and I think that for her, her family is so important. I, I, I always hear her talk about family functions and um, you know, going to check on her mom and you know, driving down to the Bay Area to see her sister and her sister's children and she just recently became a new grandma. She's 10 years younger than me and she's just becoming a new grandma, but her, her grandbaby lives in Oregon. So she you know, has to really make that drive and she feels like she's missing out 
on her grandbaby's life. And, you know, so I get so tickled when I hear her talk about <laughs> those things about her family, because to watch the excitement on her face and to see the importance of family and when there's a strain in the family, how it really pulls at her heart and just, just being on the outside, looking at all that she goes through sometimes. I, I wonder where she really does find that happiness. Is it really with being around family or is it just her being this social butterfly that she gets to spread her wings and sprinkle her fairy dust when she's around because she's a very um, excited person. And so when she walks into the room, you just automatically feel that from her. So, you know, I, I, I what do you think it means? Yeah. What, what, is, what, it mean, what does it mean to her? What do you think it means to her? Yeah. I, I think it'd have to be her, her socializing with her family and, and missing yeah. her grandbaby and, you know, not having those intimate moments that we all want with our grandkids as much as we can. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what it is for her. It's, yeah, it's, when you think of what it means, one of the things is like looking at the words and how we define them. And we often define them from our own point of view. But then when we reflect on defining them from someone else's point of view, we gather more information because those are often the things that we're seeing in others that we're curious about. And so knowing what we want to focus on happiness for is really the beginning. So that our, where our attention goes, the energy will flow. And some of the things that um, with an intention and setting an intention is uh, when we have an intention, it, you know, it really helps us to transform that fear and doubt into hope and possibility. And so with having an intention on happiness and what it means, what it means for us each individually, what we want it for, knowing what we want it for is the first step. So over the next week or so, we will be defining that intention. And so we'll just go around one more time and tell us what do you want to focus on happiness for. I want happiness. I want to focus on happiness to help me be more present, to see the little moments uh, that I acknowledge as being satisfying and joyous and easy. <laughs> Because I think we have pretty easy lives when it comes down to our needs, mm -hmm. and uh, and and to be able to focus on on it through the eyes, through the lens of happiness. Mm -hmm. I think it is that's the choice right there that you choose that. So I think that's what I intend to do over the next week. Mm -hmm. okay. I didn't want to sneeze in everybody's ear. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the question was, what do I want happiness for? Is that the question? <laughs> yeah. But we're just, we're refining, we were, we're refining our intention. Yeah. Oh, we find, I think it's just, the, you know, the tiny, the tiny habits that we develop uh, that we take for granted or we're not aware of. And, uh, and, and just the fact that, you are, we are now aware of it because we've been doing a lot of talking about it. It's more in our, 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 our language. And uh, so it's, um, uh, I think that's why I want happiness for. Hattie Jane is just joining us. <laughs> we're, okay. just about, we're just about finished, Hattie Jane. <laughs> my apologies. My time sequence has been for the pits this week. My dear <laughs> Jeez, I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. We're just talking about happiness and the things that make us happy and what happiness means. Oh. And setting, we're going to be focusing on happiness over the next 
six weeks of our time here. And we're going to be taking a journey with happiness and recognizing that it's a choice. So yes. what would what would you want to have more happiness for? I'd like to have my ability to keep in mind what time sequencing is. <laughs> I, I, I was at five o'clock. I was all ready to find you all an hour ago. And it's like, and then it's all of a sudden it's an half an hour beyond. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> awesome. I was going to be to an appointment today. It's not until next week. <laughs> well, Welcome. So, so, I'm so a little bit of time then. <laughs> it's so nice to share the laughter. Thank you. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, so, uh, did you go, Don Marie? No, not yet. No, okay. So, my intention for happiness is just having well being, knowing that all is well in my world, and knowing that my needs are being met. I, just being, you know, so grateful to have those two areas in place, my health and, you know, my needs being met that I don't have to struggle and, you know, I'm able to pretty much, you know, do what I want to do when I want to do it. So happiness to me is having those components in place to, to recognize that I can do those things so and can mm -hmm. have it. <laughs> Yes. So, yeah, my, I guess for me, focusing on happiness is to see happiness in the little things. And, and also to be able to laugh at myself more <laughs> and laugh at my seriousness. I think that's one reason I would want to focus on it more for because there's always so much more going on than what I think or see. And that's sort of a fundamental message, I think, for most people. But we, I can often get so caught up in what's in front of me and thinking that that's the only reality that's out there. And so part of focusing on happiness is to recognize that there's always so much more going on. And what way could I have more lightness of heart with all of it? So we always end with two questions. And the question that we're going to end with is, what will you take with you that'll support you until we talk again? Well, what I'll, ta I'll take uh, with me until we talk again is just this half hour of being together. And uh, it just loosens the day and uh, it, uh, it sets it's, it really sets a tone of, of comfort and uh, enjoyment and appreciation. Mm -hmm. I would have to concur with that because, you know, my schedule opened up to where I have this time now, this 30 minutes on Mondays to be able to, you know, be here and to um, take the time out of uh, a day for 30 minutes to be able to talk about things that we probably wouldn't be able to talk about on a regular basis. So having the opportunity to really, you know, get focused, get centered, to really look at what's important and do some reflective thinking. And now I have another five weeks to look forward to this <laughs> opportunity. So thank you. <laughs> awesome. What I will take with me uh, that will support me until we talk again is um, the importance of reflecting, certainly reflecting and having an intention. And that uh, goes a long way. So I will take that with me for sure. Mm. Addie J? That you all are here and I found <laughs> you. <laughs> and also my schedule opened up it so it permits me to join so thank you so much awesome well i would invite you this week then to you know think of times in the past that you were really happy and you know just little could be just little significant things but 
you know, it's all with the focus on happiness through these next few weeks. It's just like looking back at the past and, and saying, you know, looking at times when I did experience happiness and what that felt like. And uh, because that's part, you know, part of it is looking back at the past and being aware of where we are now helps us to open to the future as it, as it unfolds in front of us. So that would be my invitation as a practice is to keep happiness right in the footstep. <laughs> so. so is it, this is the last, that was just the last question. We've got anything else before I stop the recording? Uh, no, well, what will you take with you that'll support you for the rest of your life? Well, what I'll take away with the, what uh, support me the rest of my life is, is uh, the beauty of, of other people's smiles and, and, and comments and that really is, is very enriching. What I will take with me that will support me for the rest of my life is the uh, power of unity. I've said it before, the power in sharing voices and uh, very powerful. So that I will take with me for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. What I will take with me for the rest of my life is knowing that I have a choice and I can choose to be ungrateful and sorrowful, or I can choose to be happy and grateful. Mm -hmm. And this time allows me that opportunity to really think about that and to keep it as a healthy part of my life moving forward. Patty J? That the, the choice of gratitude is always mine. And it may take a little work sometimes, but it really brings a lot of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I think that's what I'll take away as well is that in any moment, I can actually choose to look at what is working as opposed to what's not working. And uh, it's, you know, it is that gratitude that creates more possibility and then choosing, making that choice. And, uh, so yeah. we're yeah. off and running. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, thank you for coming <laughs> and we'll see you next week at three o'clock Pacific time. And we'll continue on with this conversation.